Hello, algebra students. We are starting chapter three today, and we're going to be talking about functions. You've already worked with functions last year, so hopefully some of this is going to um, refresh your memory. This is a section where you're going to want to take notes because we're going to let you use those notes when we take a quiz, and there's a lot of vocabulary with this. So the first thing, and by the way, on these notes, if you need to pause the video to write stuff down, if I'm going too quickly, go ahead and do that. A relation is just any time I have inputs and outputs that are getting paired up. A lot of times it looks like ordered pairs. Sometimes we have them in input-output tables or XY tables. A specific kind of a relation is a function. In a function, each input has exactly one output. So again, this is something you did last year, but those functions where we're looking at inputs and outputs, that's a very specific kind of a relation. The domain is just another name for all of the input values. Now, the input values, if you go back up here also, the input values are the x's. So we're talking about all of the x's. When we're talking about the output values, and I'll show you that in just a second, that's going to be the y's in our ordered pairs. So when I'm talking about the range, all of the output values, those are the y's. Independent variables, and the next one is also dependent variables. I'll just show you both of those at the same time. Independent variables and dependent variables are, again, talking about the x's and the y's. Independent variables are the input values. That's just another name for the x's. When we make a table of values, we usually pick numbers that we want for x's because those are the independent ones. I can pick anything I want. For a dependent variable, that depends on what you picked for your independent variable. So those dependent variables, those are going to be the outputs or the y's. And um, when we're making a table of values, we figure out what the y is based on the x number that is given to you. I'm hoping that you remember the vertical line test from last year. If you're looking at a graph, we're going to look at tables or um, I'm sorry, functions in lots of different ways. One way is looking at a graph. And we use what's called the vertical line test to make sure that something is a function if it passes the vertical line test. Basically, if I can draw a vertical line, line up and down, anywhere on the graph and it's only going to touch one place, then it passes and it's a function. So in this case, I could draw this vertical line right here and it's going to go through one point. I could even draw a vertical line where it doesn't touch it at all and that's okay. I just can't touch in more than one place. So in the second picture, when I draw this vertical line right here, it's going to touch right there, and it's going to touch right there. If it touches twice, it is not a function. It fails the vertical line test. You probably also remember a picture like this from last year. Um, a function is kind of like a machine. It takes an input number, and it does some stuff inside the machine, and it kicks out the output number. So in this case, when we're putting negative 2 into this function, the function is just saying, I'm going to take whatever you give me, and I'm going to multiply it by 3. And then my output is the answer when I do that. So 3 times a negative 2 is negative 6. Now this is a function because if I put the input of negative 2 in there, the only possible answer I can get is negative 6. If you can get more than one answer, then it's not a function. So we can take a look at functions in lots of different ways. We can have an equation. We'll be looking at that somewhat also. Input output tables, words, graphs, a set of word pairs. And you can see that there's a graph here also on this slide. I want to know why this graph is a function. And again, it's because it passes the vertical line test. If I would draw a vertical line, I could hit one point with that vertical line. If I would draw another vertical line, I might not hit, it any, hit it anything at all. So that could happen as well. In these two tables, the x and y input output tables, one of these is a function and one of them is not. The really important part for this is that the input numbers 
cannot repeat. I can have for this first one, when I put zero, let's say, into that function machine, I would get eight. It would be a different function because it's not the same rule. But if I put one in there, I'd get eight. If I put two in there, I'd get eight. If I put three in there, I'd get eight. If I put four in there, I'd get eight. But each one of them only gives me one answer. In the second problem, so in this first problem, this is a function because each input has exactly one output. In the second one, one time I put the eight into my function and I got a zero. So I put the eight in again and I get a different number. I get a one or I get a two or I get a three or I get a four. If the X is repeat, it is not a function. And again, it's looking at the inputs. If the inputs repeat, not a function because each input can only have one output. So you've looked at mappings like letter C last year. Uh, the first two are fine. I put a one into my function, I get one answer out. I put a two into my function, I get an answer out. I put a three in, ooh, I might get a 10 or I might get an 11. Right there, having two arrows going away says it's not a function. And my computer and screen are slow today, so it's kind of weird to write. Letter D, I want to know if this passes the vertical line test. And in a lot of places, it would pass, but not everywhere. If I would draw my vertical line right there, not that it's a very good vertical line, it would hit twice. Same thing right here. So because it hits twice, this is not a function. Because it fails the vertical line test. In letter E, I want you to look at the axis and an F as well. I just want to look at the x's. If the x's don't repeat, it's a function. So I've got a negative 2 and a negative 1, 0, 1, 2. No repeating, that's a function. In letter F, I've got a negative 2, negative 1, negative 1. Same input twice, not a function. Smart board is not very smart right now. For number one, I want to know if this is a function. Again, I'm looking to see if any of my x's repeat, and they do. Right here, negative 2 for my input, negative 2 for my input, so that is not a function. I can't repeat any of those inputs. For number two, if I look at my x's, my inputs, 0, 1, 2, 3, that is a function. No repeating x's. in this problem. I still want to know if it's a function. I guess I can just show you both of these. Um, in number three, it is not a function. This vertical line hits two different points, so it's not a function. Number four, it doesn't really matter that this isn't linear. It doesn't have to be a straight line. If I draw a vertical line, I'm only going to hit once. This is a function. For this last part, number five is asking for the domain and range. In our vocabulary part, we said the domain was the x's and range was the y's. So I can make a list either by each input, each um, point separately, or I can just list all of the x's and all of the y's. So in the first order pair, Right here, this ordered pair is 0, 4. The domain number, the x number was 0, and the range was 4. The second one, this point, is at 1, 4. So I would need to put the 1 here, but I already have the 4 for the range. I don't have to rewrite it. This point is 2, 4. So I would need the domain. I don't need to rewrite the 4 for the range. For the next point, this is at 3, 3. So I do need the 3 here. Now, this is going to really bother me because they're not in order, but 3 is one of my range numbers. This point is at 4, 3, so I would need the 4 here. And again, I already have the 3, and this point is 5, 3. Okay. 
we're actually going to skip problems like number six for now. We might come back and talk about those later, but those are not in today's work, and um, we're not going to be dealing with that for now. All right. Um, for number seven, this says that um, I've got a function, y equals 12x. That's the number of pages of text that a computer can print in X number of minutes. So this is really saying that every single minute, the computer can print 12 pages of paper. So the independent variable, remember the independent variable, that's just going to be the X. And the X is the number of minutes. The dependent variable, that's the Y, that's how many pages get printed. The number of pages depends on how long it's printing. If I would substitute in the domain of one, two, three, and four, what's the range? That's just saying if I put in one minute, I would get 12 pages of paper. If I put go for two minutes, that would be 24, three would be 36, and four would be 48. Today's practice problems are from your book, so you'll have to go in through Clever or look at the pages that are downloaded in Schoology. Uh, we're going to go on page 108. Um, actually, it does not go to 110. I think it only starts, stops at 109. Um, numbers 4 through 14. This is supposed to be evens. And then 19 through 22 all. So 4 through 14 is only the evens, not all of them. And then make sure that you check the answers with the answer key in Schoology. When you're all done with that, there is a short formative quiz in Schoology. Let me know if you have any questions.